Welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. Hello and welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. This time we're going to do a kind of a review of Stellarium, which is a free program that you can download on the, on the internet for free. Now we've done one of these before, but this time I want to get in a little bit more depth of some of the plugins that are available with Stellarium. And of course I'm using the latest version this time, Stellarium 10.6. Seems to be running very fine on my computer with no problems. And you can download this for free at Stellarium.org. Stellarium.org. So uh, that's spelled S T E L L A R I U M dot org. So jump out there and uh, download this free software and install it. And the very first thing that you need to do is to jump over here to the left hand side of the screen and open up the location window icon and make sure that you put in uh, either your location by city and you can scroll this bar by country by city and pick out your location and you've noticed I've picked out Dallas Texas another way to do it is just simply to input the latitude and longitude of your uh, location and be sure you click this use as default button and then it'll use that location in the future every time you open up the program so your very first step is to get a location uh, the software will get the time and date from your computer so make sure your computer time and date is correct and it'll just get that automatically so this time, with this little review of Stellarium, we want to look at some of the plugins that are available for Stellarium, three of them in particular. And so we're going to go over here to the configuration window icon, which looks like a little wrench, and we're going to click it. Box is going to open up. Notice that there's a save settings so once you get all this configured the way you want it, you want to click this Save Settings so that it'll save it. And that's the way it'll start up the next time you use it. But if you'll go over to the right-hand tab here where it says Plugins, we want to review and click that. We want to review three or four of these plugins today. And as you notice, there's one called Angle Measurement. Another one called Compass Marks, another one called Oculars, and another one called Satellites. Now I've already run through those four and I've clicked this little box down here in every one of them to make sure that it loads at startup. So that's the first thing you need to do is click through these, click the load at startup, right there in each one of them. Now several of them have a configuration button as you can see right here that allows you to configure that plug-in. So let's start with the angle measurement. Notice the button is grayed out. There's really no configuration for that. Uh, and the compass marks, there's no configuration. It just loads the startup. However, the Oculars does have a configuration button that you can click and basically establish the eyepiece that you want to see on the screen. And I'll show you that in a minute. But pick an eyepiece with a fairly wide field of view and, you know, say 25 millimeter or 30 millimeter and put that in here and then save it you know so we'll close this box and we'll come back over to here and click save settings 
and it'll save all that configuration information that you just put in. Notice also on the Satellites plugin, you can update the satellite data uh, in real time, and I'm going to do that right now by simply clicking the Update Now button, and it'll go out there and grab the orbital data for the satellites and update it for you. You can also set an automatic uh, update when you'd like to update it up here in this top box. But usually what I do is when I first start the program, I'll jump into here and update the satellite information. Just takes a few seconds and then everything's okay. And I always click Save Settings as Default right here so that it'll save whatever I've done up here. You can also increase the size of the satellite label, make it a little bit easier to see on the screen by clicking these buttons and making the label larger or smaller based on the way you'd like it. So with that configuration finished, you'll close and open the program and you'll notice now in the bottom bar that there are some new icons there. There's your uh, ocular icon and there's your compass mark icon and there is your angle measurement icon. Those will appear and of course your satellite one which I've already got turned on. Those will appear at the bottom once you click those uh, little check boxes that say load at startup over in that configuration menu I just showed you. So let's kind of take a look at the ocular one first and let me select uh, an object that might have a picture attached to it. Here's M47. Let's try to get M47 right here okay and that's an open cluster and I'm going to go down here to oculars and I'm gonna click it and now it's zoomed in and it's trying to give me a view of that open cluster as it would appear in my telescope using that particular eyepiece so you kind of get an idea of what that object might look like by using this ocular uh, plug-in that's available in Stellarium. If you click it again, it zooms back out to the default view. Now notice, uh, let's see if we can find a planet. I want to do that just to show you. Here's Jupiter. So we'll come up here and click Jupiter. And notice it's given me a lot of information on Jupiter up here. And what we want to do is click this ocular button again. And now we've got a view of Jupiter through that particular eyepiece that's listed up here. And it's also showing us some of the moons of Jupiter there. So very handy little tool to kind of give you an idea of what you will see in the eyepiece, uh, in that particular eyepiece in your telescope. So very neat little tool. The next one that I want to show you is the compass marks. And if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you can see we, we're looking west right now. And there's south, okay. So we'll look west, and I'll come down here, and I will click the compass marks. And all of a sudden, it's changed to a 360-degree markings around the bottom. That's simply telling you what direction you're looking in by a degree marking rather than by north, south, east, west. Kind of can be used with a daub to kind of, if you've got setting circles on it, to kind of get that daub pointed in the appropriate direction so that you're kind of lined up with 
whatever you want to search for. You know, so if we were going to go through this field, you know, I would line this daub up according to these numbers here so that when I raise the tube, all right, I'd be going right through the middle of uh, these particular objects. Kind of a helpful little tool if you have a daub and you're searching for something. Of course, you do have right ascension, declination, and altitude azimuth settings that you can do by just clicking these two buttons here. So if we want an uh, azimuth grid to go along with these degree markings, we can click this, and all of a sudden you've got the azimuth grid on the screen. All right, and again up here it tells you exactly where that little circular little cursor marking is located right up here in real time. It's a very handy little tool, this degree marking along the bottom of the screen in place of the north, south, east, west markings. If we click it again, it goes back to the default north, south, east, west buttons or designations at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so now we're looking north. So the next thing I want to show you is the angle marking. Sometimes you need to know if you're searching. Let's say you're here at, uh, oh, we're here. Let me find something. You're here at Jupiter. We've got Jupiter in the eyepiece, and we want to move uh, over to this star right here, okay, with a daub. And we can click this angle marking turn it on and then we can draw a line over to this object and it gives us the angle between Jupiter and this object. And you can see as I move this around the angle markings change based on uh, what the angle is over to that object. So Again, another real handy little tool that's available. Uh, if you just go over here, click this configuration button, jump into these plugins, and turn these on, you'll have more features down here that you can use in Stellarium. Now, notice I already have my satellite button opened. And there should be a satellite somewhere. I saw one. Or here's one right here. It's uh, NOAA Satellite 19. There it is right there. And, you know, we'll try to zoom in a little bit on it here. Let me center it up. And then we'll zoom in on it a little bit. And there you go. There is the NOAA 19 satellite. And again, it's given me a lot of information about that satellite right up here on this left-hand part of the screen. So pretty neat feature. And if I click the satellite, of course, the satellite disappears. And so these are your on-off buttons down here for these features. So you can turn on the ones you want and turn off the ones you don't want. A question that I get all the time from people who have just started using this is, uh, you know, I try to look at it during the daytime, I can't see any stars. Well, yeah, that's right. That's because you have atmosphere turned on, which is this button right here. And if I click atmosphere... You can see that it's, uh, you know, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon here, and the sky is bright. And now it's only showing me some constellation lines. It's not really showing me any features of the sky because you really can't see them right now. You can't see those features. So you're only getting the constellation markings and things like that that are visible. So what you need to do is you need to 
come on out here and you need to turn off atmosphere, which is right here, atmosphere, and all of a sudden you'll get a night sky even during the daytime. All right, and that's usually the way I leave it because I want to be able to see the stars during the daytime so I can see what's up during the day and, of course, what's up at night. So I usually leave atmosphere turned off. Another handy little uh, icon here is the one that looks kind of like a star in an eye. It kind of looks like an eyeball, except the eyeball is a star. And if you click this icon right down here, it changes the screen to red, which is much more friendly to your night vision while you're outside at night. So you come down here at night and click this little eye button with a star in it and you'll get a red screen and red constellations. You still probably will need to turn down your uh, screen, uh, how bright it is on your laptop, because even if it's too much red, it can affect you, your night vision, even though it is red. If it's too bright, it will affect it. So use this button at night when you're outside with your laptop. Turn it on to red and lower the brightness of your laptop screen. Another little handy uh, little tool at the bottom. So my advice to you is to experiment with this program. Uh, come down here and click all these and see what they do, you know, and see the lines that you can put on the chart right ascension declination or the alt as lines you can add and what all these buttons do just play with it for a while it'll become very self-evident to you very quickly you shouldn't have any problems with it but again the most critical thing to do the minute you download this software and you've got it running is come over here and put in your location and then and be sure you check this use as default button and then it'll use that location every time you open up the program and you'll be looking at the correct star field if you don't fix that you're gonna be looking at the a completely wrong star field for your location so that's very important here under the location. And the other one that's very important, once I do a lot of configuration on this program and get it the way I want it, I come over here to the configuration window, which is that little wrench again right here, and I go to the main tab, and I click Save Settings. Save Settings. And that way it'll save my particular configuration for this program and it'll be that way every time I open it up. So with that said, I'd like to wish you clear skies and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.